Let's jump right in and uh, begin. Uh, the first slide that you see here is a picture. We've moved into a new building a couple of years ago. And this is the main kind of area, we call it the pitch of the building. It's called the Kaplan Building. And so we're very excited and, and uh, it is um, a good signal for us, the commitment of our university to our school. And uh, finally, we're able to spread out uh, and, and really take advantage of, of the space that we have. So um, I'd love to um, share some more pictures with you a little bit later, uh, but before we do that, uh, let's see here. We need to uh, take a moment to talk about design. Now, I'm assuming most of you uh, have a little bit of an understanding of what design is, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Uh, but um, I found it to be helpful to take a moment to back up. This model, if you uh, can see here, is from, uh, it's adapted from Nigel Cross. Uh, he talks uh, about ways of knowing. So we're back and way up to saying, well, how do we understand the world? And he posits that design is actually a different way uh, as opposed to science or art. Uh, and in fact, you know, we kind of borrow from both sides of that uh, equation, whereas science is focused on uh, objectivity and uh, rationality. The arts focused on our experience, the subjectivity of that, and uh, and uh, imagination, uh, we are kind of in between, and we borrow from both, and so that's uh, very helpful uh, for some that aren't sure about what design is. Uh, but that doesn't quite answer our question because we want to know well, what kind of design do we practice here at the Institute of Design? Um, so. Uh, as we expand and look into this field of design. The other thing that's challenging about this is design um, is a funny word. It's used in lots and lots of ways. It's uh, the um, outcome of something we do. It is the object that is created. It's an attribute. It's an activity. Uh, it's a profession. There's all sorts of ways. So the word itself is a little um, problematic. But be that as it may, we're going to jump right in. And if we think about design as outcomes, like the the production, what comes out of the work of design, all sorts of things uh, pop up, you know, from cars to buildings to furniture and products, we move into fashion, uh, we start to get into advertising and, you know, things like identity and communications, uh, environments, you know, interior designs, uh, scene design, uh, exhibit design, we can go into then storytelling, where we're talking about animations and books and sound and um, and more recently, relatively speaking, um, you know, we get into things like interactions and websites and games and software. Uh, we've moved into uh, designing strategies and services, uh, even into policies and the speculation of what the future uh, may be. So lots of different kinds of design outputs. Uh, at the Institute of Design, we, we don't do them all. Uh, we do a lot, but not them, uh, not all of them. Uh, the ones highlighted here are the ones that we focus on in our program. We feel that the design we do is a little more strategic. And uh, because of that, we tend to be a slightly higher level uh, where we focus on things like services and interactions and policies. Um, we still do a little bit of the more traditional design, but it's um, it's a little bit smaller. Uh, than that. So that helps us understand a little bit about who we are as a school. Uh, a couple of other things, though, that are important to consider uh, from our current dean, Dennis Weil, uh, he uh, is exploring this idea of the role of designers, us as professionals, what do we do? So if we roll that clock all the way back, you know, most of design in the beginning was all about the creation of something, an artifact of some sort, a poster, a product, etc. cetera. Uh, and that continues today. Uh, but around um, closer to the turn of this century, uh, this is, the role of design moved differently, it expanded. And uh, we have this uh, one called Navigator, which is the idea that in more complex products or offerings, service offerings, we have a uh, combination of interaction design and product design and service design. And the role of the designer was to navigate that, to coordinate those so they came together um, in an expected way. Um, most recently, though, it's actually started to move up even a little higher in that uh, when we start dealing with 
complicated systems. So imagine things like a healthcare system or um, you know, an education system. Uh, that uh, can get uh, very complicated, very complex. And so it's more than just navigating the various parts and pieces and how to pull it together, but it's working across many different teams to integrate those into a whole. Uh, and make that make sure that whole is uh, as productive, useful, on target, um, and things like that. So um, this is very interesting, and we we embrace it fully. Uh, and in any of these, whether you're a creator, navigator, integrator, any role that you're playing, it's always in the pursuit of you know something new, novel, better than it was before. Right? Uh, that's what we do as designers. Um, uh, uh, Professor Emeritus Patrick Whitney, he used to be the dean of the uh, school here, uh, also noticed something that, um, you know, back when we were in our creator days as a role of design, uh, much of design is around the Industrial Revolution, you know, into the 1960s and 70s, um, the challenge of design was how to get something done. We would come up with an idea, work with our teams, and the work was about, well, how do we make this? How do we do it quickly, cost-effectively, with quality, um, sustainably, all of that? So it was how to make things. Uh, and organizations over the you know past decades here have gotten really good at how to make things. What we've not gotten good at, in fact, kind of gotten less good at as organizations uh, is figuring out what's worth making. So of all the things we can do, which is a lot, what's worth it? What's worth the time and the energy and the effort? Uh, and so this gap between what we can make and what we should make is what he called the innovation gap. And that's also um, a piece of context here that we need to wrestle with and we often do at our school. Another way to think about this is uh, something you may have seen in your research, uh, this kind of triptych uh, uh, overlapping um, concerns is another way to think about this challenge. Uh, the, the most interesting innovations and improvements have been ones that balance uh, what is possible in the world in terms of technologies and capabilities with the organizations and how they can do that sustainably. So the viability of those offerings and doing those in line with what people value, what's really useful for them, what do they desire? And solving that puzzle is what a lot of what we think design is about. Okay, so that gives you some context for how we think about design. It's a, relatively speaking, it's a fairly young field. Um, and uh, so it's exciting as it grows. Uh, we, this particular school was founded as the new Bauhaus in 1937. We're a direct descendant of the Bauhaus for you who like to study history. Um, we are um, right from the, what some consider the crucible of Western design education. Uh, what we hold on to in that kind of DNA and that lineage is a very holistic approach to design and an embrace of multiple disciplines uh, to come together to make the world a better place. Uh, we are a graduate school of the Illinois Institute of Technology. It's uh, one, it's a technical university here in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, it is, we are the largest graduate only uh, design program in the US. Most design programs have an undergraduate component, uh, which is usually pretty large and a small graduate component. Ours is graduate only, uh, including PhD um, studies. We're the first to create such a thing and only one of two universities in the entire um, United States that offers a PhD in design. Um, some of the programs that we have here, these are the main ones, and we could certainly talk more about these. Uh, the Master of Design is the terminal degree for the field of design, meaning it's typically considered the last degree you would get in a formal education. It uh, is four semesters long, two years. Uh, if you come to us without design background, which we encourage, uh, there's one more additional semester uh, to complete. We have some 
uh, variations on this uh, degree. Well, it's not a variation of the degree, I'm sorry. The degree is the same, but we have variations on the program. So you can, uh, one is with the MBA. We've been doing that for about 15 years now. And so you can earn a Master of Business Administration while you are earning your Master of Design and actually get two master's degrees once you're done. We recently, as of last year, uh, added another program similar to that. And rather than uh, a business focus, it's a master of public policy. As um, more and more of our students are interested in that field, uh, we've created this dual degree. Uh, we also, um, as Lana had mentioned earlier, have a Master of Design Methods, which is a shorter program, typically um, pointed to those that are a little bit more experienced in the field. Uh, and then, as I said, we also have a, a PhD in design. This, uh, on our website, uh, there is a lot of descriptions of all of the courses and things that we do. But from uh, the Master of Design, uh, the point I wanted to talk about here is how we think about our education in that um, uh, everybody is on a unique path. Every student that we have in the school is coming from a different background, uh, different life experiences, different educations. We love that. We think that's extremely important to the, the vibrancy of our student body. So our curriculum uh, is flexible. We have many electives, very few required courses. Uh, and this general path here, this structure of uh, some kind of an entry phase, some for some that's a little bit longer, for some that's a little bit shorter. We have a series of core areas, core competencies that we uh, describe, uh, consisting of several courses. Uh, those are for everybody that's uh, um, earning this degree. Uh, and then students go on to concentrate in an area. You don't have to, you could take courses across all of them, but they are structured in a way that you could concentrate in one or two of those areas. And then we have some advanced uh, coursework, advanced projects uh, towards the end as you get towards the end of your time. Uh, so uh, we find that to work uh, very well, again, with the range of students that we have uh, coming into the school. Master of Design Methods is a little different. Uh, it has, um, uh, similarly, it's set up uh, in terms of modules. There's a, what we call human-centered design component in the front, which is common to all. And then the MDM students also have some choices about where they want to focus. It's a little bit more um, uh, prescribed because it's a shorter program, uh, but you can see there's some very similar kind of uh, topics uh, that the MDM uh, students do. Most courses have a mixture of MDM students and MDES students in them. And we're even seeing more mixture with PhD students in certain courses. Again, we love that. We think that vibrancy is very helpful for an educational environment. Um, I was gonna spend some time talking about projects, but as I was looking at them, I was like, oh my gosh, there's way too many to talk about in such a short amount of time. So I'm gonna point you to our website. Uh, there you can find many, many of our projects and the context behind them, the, the stories about what they were, where they came from. So uh, please feel free to explore that as well as all of our website. We try to put everything we know on that website to answer your questions um, and definitely uh, look at those projects. And if you're really interested, uh, the instructor or the students should be listed. You could also reach out to them and uh, get some more additional information if, if you care to. Uh, but as you can see, uh, a good range of um, more traditional design, communication design. Each one of these projects has some very interesting uh, backstories about where they came from and how they uh, were successful in their efforts. Um, uh, like any good program, we're more than just our classes. Uh, we have all sorts of uh, activities, opportunities for students to uh, pursue, whether it's conferences. Um, uh, we have uh, what we call faculty research projects, which is housed in a new thing called the Action Lab. Uh, that is where you could help faculty on the research that they are doing. Um, we have corporate sponsored projects, usually four or five, at least four or five a semester, uh, depending on the courses and the, and the companies we're working with. Um, uh, as uh, Lana mentioned, we have uh, ID IDSA, which is the Institute of Design um, 
oh shoot, I forgot what that stood for. <laughs> Student Association, thank you. Um, and, uh, and various groups within there. There's lots of different uh, choices there. Uh, we do have a very strong career component to the school uh, where we have externships and internships. <laughs> Uh, and then we have, you know, more traditional things like end of year show. So lots of different activities as well as room to do your own, pursue your own. We think that's great. Uh, that's a part of education. Um, but the final point I want to get to is uh, beyond classes and, and other activities is about the students. And as I said, our student body is, uh, has a um, a lot of uh, variability uh, and that we think that's great. Uh, students come from very, very different backgrounds. So this is a, a diagram that tried to expose that where we have students with a good deal of, of uh, undergraduate study as well as professional experience in design coming in to amplify their skills. Uh, we have those that are uh, coming um, from the design field, maybe a little bit younger. And so here they want to catalyze, they're ready to go, but they wanted to learn a little bit more and um, move to that master's level. And then we have others that are doing a pivot. They're coming from other fields and wanting to dedicate uh, their careers and their energies towards design. All of those are exciting. We think all of them are, are um, excellent ways uh, to uh, be involved and to uh, pursue your education. And we've structured the school around that. So we readily accept that. Um, and even though everyone's coming from a different place, a different background, uh, we all have uh, these shared values that permeate through everything that we do, that we want to develop experiences here. We want to make, we call it making, this idea of you learn through doing, not by watching others, not by reading about it, but by doing it. Um, and that uh, we develop our discipline and our rigor through methods and uh, purposeful action. Uh, and that's guided uh, by curiosity, not just blinding lights of inspiration, although those are fun, uh, those are hard to count on. And, uh, but what we can count on is um, a curiosity that we could apply to any problem that we look at. And above all else, uh, collaboration. It is the way that design is done. Uh, I would challenge anybody in, in kind of this era to point to a single person executing any kind of design. Uh, it's just, it's not possible anymore. It has to be done through teamwork uh, and that requires leadership and insight, which are the skills that we cultivate in our program. Uh, just a quick little highlight in there, uh, Rodrigo, I have to update the list here. I don't have Peru. I am so sorry. Uh, don't worry. We have lots of backgrounds. <laughs> we'll update uh, it later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Lots of nationalities, as you can see, changing uh, every year. Uh, and uh, as I said, the backgrounds could be both educational and professional, uh, as well as these nationalities. These are all present in our school at this time. Uh, and then the paths and the passions, the things that these students care about, what they're focusing their studies on, uh, which makes for, again, a wonderful, rich environment to learn. Uh, and we think that's important for design to have the broadest perspective possible. Um, we think uh, it's so important uh, because not only is it a reflection of the students, but it's also a reflection of the field. Design is often at this nexus point between all sorts of disciplines and, and knowledges and that uh, what we do as a school is readily adapt and integrate these other fields into our thinking, into our studies, so that we're able uh, to really be powerful in our work. When it's all said and done, uh, then our graduates of our programs are able to um, uh, hit, hit the ground running, as we say uh, here, and to be able to uh, solve problems at different scales and different levels of complexity uh, and to do that in a way that is sustainable, a way that uh, organizations can adopt and be able to um, deploy and not just in commercial endeavors, but also um, increasingly in non-for-profit and civic uh, endeavors. Uh, we've had, even through the pandemic, pretty good placement. It's been a little bumpy as everyone has experienced, uh, but we have alumni around the world in pretty much every major city in the world. And um, 
Uh, and over time, we believe we will still be able to have this uh, extremely high placement rate. This isn't in any job. This is in the jobs the students wanted. Okay, so I think that's it for the overview. Thank you very much for your patience here.